Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, The Opening Call. Now, you can ride Basil's Chapman wave each and every day. Come on over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see under newsletters, hit newsletters. On the left-hand side, you're going to see the opening call. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. You get it for one full year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. They all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. When you get Basil's newsletter, you're also going to get approximately 12 archives so that you understand about Basil looks at the market each and every day. Check it out. It's a 30-day 30 money-back guarantee, 28th, 29th day. If it doesn't work for you, just let us know. No big deal. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Well, we certainly gave you a good weekend this past week in Boston, didn't we? You know, it's amazing, Basil. You did give us a good weekend, but I am such a baby now that... You know, Thursday was, I wasn't there Thursday. Tommy was there Thursday. It, it was it was good, but I've been in Florida too long. Your blood is, yeah. I've been in Florida too yeah. long. 35 degrees, you know, is, is not <laughs> like, I. Right. you know, it's 82 degrees out here today. You know, yeah, you know, the body just gets used to it. There's just no question about it. It, so, it does. And, and right now, folks, what happens, the, the fluctuation here is the biggest fluctuation all year. That's what ends up happening. You guys are getting colder, and we really don't get colder. When I say not, colder, it'll go down to 60, but that's not going to happen until, like, the stabilized. last week in December for, like, two right. weeks. <laughs> uh, what can I say? <laughs> anyway, it was a great time. We had a great Good. time. But I'll tell you something. I couldn't wait to get back on that plane, man. So, yeah, I can understand that. But yeah. Boston is booming beyond belief. I mean, the, a, did you get a chance? I was going to ask you if you got. Did you get a chance to go down the turnpike at all? I did. I did. Did you see the what's happened in Alston? It's just unbelievable. It's, uh, it's it, folks. It is so over the top. I mean, you're talking about biotech. You're talking about health. You're talking. I met when when Bridget and I were coming home. Uh, I met the CEO of uh, Edmund, uh, uh, chairman of the board, actually, uh, you know, just on the, the rental bus going, picking up, uh, going to the terminals. Yeah. And uh, he was talking about, now he's flying in, of course, from Silicon Valley, and he's just talking about that everyone has to fly to Boston. That's the bottom line. Yeah. You, you want to do business, you're going to fly to Boston, which is pretty amazing. He, he was in the blood business, but, you know, oh. you know, uh, biotechs, blood, health. Oh, yeah, it's, amazing. Yeah. yeah, beyond belief, man. So what we're looking at here is the, is the Dow. So the Dow is made you know, in the Chapman Wave. I'll just show this for people that are new to my work. I try to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher uh, peak, alphabetize them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to G. There's never an H. But at D, the fourth highest peak, when you get upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, the, the least I expect is a D. So where are we now in the Dow? We've gone to... A, We'll probably can't, we aren't going to do it today. It's too late. So the 35,227 high uh, that we made yesterday, that's peak C. If I look at the S&P, uh, did I just move something away? I guess I did. Let me just go back here. If I go to the S&P, there it is, peak C. If I go to the QQQ, Q3, and, of course, NVIDIA is coming out in a little while, so QQQ, peak C. If I go to the semiconductors, peak C. So what I had said on the 31st of uh, October, I had said to subscribers, we're going to grab, I want something that has the Dow, that has the um, NASDAQ, it has the QQQ, it has the semiconductor, not the semiconductors, but the, S, the XLK, which is the S&P select uh, tech sector. I want that, and we chose Microsoft, and we were lucky, we bought it at 333, uh, 338.00. $338. Nice. And uh, Microsoft yesterday hit uh, $378. So it's a 40 point gain. But uh, it is at a D and it is a little extended. But if you look at the, the nine period moving average over the 14, that is still really strong. The MACD is strong. The stochastics at 91. So I still like this very much, even though it's broken out to all time highs. We were very fortunate today because a stock that we've had for a long time from the, I've mentioned it to you many, many times, 
Symbotic Inc. end-to-end -end AI robotic warehouse automation systems. We're in the 21. We've taken little bits off. I keep, we've been trying to get in for an add-on to what we've taken off. It's been kind of tough, but today, after earnings yesterday, it's up 37%. It's at 51.20. Wow. Isn't that, I mean, congratulations. Is, That's amazing. Yeah, this, this, and it's in an area that I think um, this this is what's needed robotic warehouse automation system. So I like it a lot. Um, so very fortunate with that. And then I'd mentioned to you UEC, which is uranium, which is very interesting because it's in the energy area, but not spoken about very much. It made a new recovery high uh, today at uh, 654. Uh, this is Uranium Energy Corporation, UEC is the symbol. Uh, it's doing very nicely. It's also a little bit overbought, but uh, all the technicals are actually very strong. Just the unbalanced volumes are a little more overbought. So we're in at three, uh, 364, and it's trading right now at 643. So also a very nice. That's you got some big action, Basil. Game. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, but this is, I think it's going to get a little harder. I'm looking at uh, all the technicals and I'm waiting for a peak D because peak D is where we always make a decision on whether to, what we're going to do, whether we're going to short or it, within three days after a peak D, if there's a new high, that can be treated in a completely different way. So all the Chapman Wave methodology is going to be tested over the next three, four sessions going into next Monday. And I, I'm looking forward to it because it is a challenge. But um, the positions that we have are so far doing well. They're in the, the sweet spot, and that's the most important thing. If you, if you look at the market overall, uh, even in the gold stocks, I was going through them this morning I, or yesterday to, or today. Yeah, it was today. And we're talking about how it's very selective. Gold is done beautifully. But the GDX, I always like to see gold, uh, the GDX, the gold miners lead gold. Um, and if I looked at many of the stocks, many of them are not participating, but the ones that are, are doing really well. Yeah, so inside, kind of inside the, the GDX, market. you know, when you have the two largest weightings, you know, is Newmont and uh, Barrick, and they're both dogs. Both that, 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 well. that, that, that's what you're looking at there. That's, that's right. the bottom line. But everywhere else, I think, I mean, you're looking at, so I, I, I like the fact that gold has now become a little bit independent. I thought it was because... It, I'd say it mustn't be related to the Middle East. It has to be not a geopolitical uh, currency of insurance. It has to be on its own. And I think the action between gold and silver, especially since silver has really started to lead a little bit, I think now you've got something that's viable, especially with the dollar, which is in a sell mode. Uh, in, the, uh, in the daily chart, 102 is really the support area when I do the symmetry of the left side to the right side. That's the level I'm looking at to see exactly what happens there. But I think that at the end of the week, I'm going to have to say that the weekly chart has gone from a sell signal maybe to a sell mode. And then I think that it frees up a lot of areas, maybe even bonds. So we're looking at uh, this, this is becoming a little simpler in terms of the market action. because. Folks, come on to our, our website at TFNN. You're going to newsletters. You see the opening call right on the left-hand side. Basil, have a great one, safe one, and we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You too.